my uh, good afternoon. Is it afternoon yet? Almost, Almost afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. I am so glad that all of you are here today, and we're going to be talking about leading the village in the 21st century. But how do we do that? When I first heard about this presentation, leading the village in the 21st century, I thought about what on earth does that mean? How, how, what does that mean about leading the village in the 21st century? So I had to really think about it for a moment. And um, I thought about a time when I was very young and was building my own career. And what was really interesting is that I really wanted to do well in my profession. So I worked really, really hard. I thought I was hot stuff. I thought I had it going on. I worked really hard, and I didn't care who I had to step on to get where I needed to go. I used to build all kinds of great events. I was in marketing, so I did a lot of marketing programs and talent tours and traveled all around the country and was really doing it, so I thought. But here's the problem. After I would create all of these great events and all of these great programs, nobody wanted to work with me. Every time it was time for me to put a team together, I don't want to work with Gina. She's too this, she's too bossy, she's too hard, she doesn't listen. And what was interesting was I started feeling really bad and really guilty. Like, nobody likes me? Nobody wants to work with me? What is that all about? I thought if I worked really hard that I would advance and grow and people would love me and people would want to work with me. But that wasn't the truth. In order to lead the village in the 21st century, it has to begin with the self. Being able to understand yourself, who you are, what you believe, what's important to you, and also understanding other people and working with those other people. And then I said, okay, well, in order to do that, how do we do that? So my talk today is about leading the village in the 21st century by learning about emotional intelligence. In order for you to understand the self and others, you've got to understand emotional intelligence. So what is emotional intelligence? Well, emotional intelligence is not about being touchy-feely. It's not about being emotional and falling out on the floor and screaming and, and, and yelling. It's about being able to understand what is important to you. What is it that you like? What is it that you don't like? What is it that gets your gait, that gets you upset? And how are you able to communicate that, not only within yourself, but with, with others? How do you say things like, and being honest, that's the other thing, being honest with who you are, being honest with how you feel about things. I am angry, I am frustrated, I am irritated, this bothers me. And being able to say it in a way that is strong enough but also open enough so that other people know how to deal with you. How many days does it take to change a habit? 21, 21 days, three weeks to change a habit. And what are the three aspects of change? If you want to change, you have to do what? What's number one? Uh, close. You have to be aware that you need to change. Someone came up to me several years ago and said, Gina, you are so unapproachable. I thought, me? Unapproachable? I'm the most bubbly, happy-go-lucky person out there. But perception is reality, is that right? Perception is reality. So this person had a perception of me. I wasn't self-aware enough. And we're going to talk about the four characteristics in just a minute. But I wasn't aware enough that I needed to change. I didn't have that self-awareness. So I had to ask a couple of people. So the first person I asked was my mother. Now, I'm 50 years old, and I still call my mother mommy. I said, mommy, do you think I'm unapproachable? 
Say, yeah, Gina, sometimes you can be unapproachable. I thought, when am I unapproachable? She says, when you're stressed out and overwhelmed, you tend to get a little snappy. And I thought, really? I said, mother, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and so I asked my best friend, Tyra, whose last name is Banks, by the way. Gina Davis, Tyra Banks, and we're both from Los Angeles. So I said, Tyra, do you think I'm unapproachable? Said, yeah, Gina, sometimes you can be unapproachable. I said, what am I unapproachable? <laughs> she said, when you're working and, you know, sometimes somebody will come into your office and then you have this scowl on your face. And I said, really? She said, yeah. And, and you work so hard, but you tend to really have this posture that really puts people off as well. And I said, really? She said, yeah. I said, OK. Then I asked a colleague, someone who wasn't necessarily my friend, but someone who I work with on a regular basis. I said, you know, Susan, do you think I'm unapproachable? I said, Gina, I think you're approachable. <laughs> I said, really? She said, well, sometimes. <laughs> Maybe you need to work on it just a little bit. So, 21 days to change a habit. So I have to be aware, then I have to be willing to change. That's the second. I have to be willing to change. And of course, I speak to audiences all across the country, and of course I had to be willing and motivated, right? So I was. And then I had to take action. What did I have to do to actually become more approachable? I had to smile more. I had to be more open. And I had to be willing to let people in and be able to ask questions and me to help them and, and, and show them that I'm, that I'm willing to care about their feelings, what they're trying to do. And that's what emotional intelligence is all about. It's all about understanding the self, who you are, and then being able to understand and work with others. Emotional intelligence goes back a lot of years. It goes back to, and I don't have time to go into a history lesson, all the way back to social intelligence with uh, Professor Edward Thorndike, but it became popular in 1995 with Daniel Goleman, who wrote the book, of course, Emotional Intelligence. So EQ versus IQ. So in order to lead the village in the 21st century, you have to know the difference between EQ and IQ. So IQ is what? It's your what intelligence? intelligence? Your cognitive intelligence, right? So what's interesting is with your IQ, people think, and I thought the same thing. I thought through my IQ, through my cognitive intelligence, through my functional abilities, that I will advance, that I will grow. But actually, there's some statistics here that says that for every EQ skill that you build, you add $1,300 annually to your salary. So people may not think that's a lot, but there are a lot of critical skills that's based on developing your emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence is the predictor of your performance. Yeah, it's the predictor of your performance. EQ is how you get promoted, your IQ will get you the job, but EQ will get you actually promoted. And your salary goes up and up exponentially as you begin to build these skills, which is really important. Okay. Here's another statistic for you, that when careers get knocked off their path, 75% is that people lack critical emotional intelligence skills. They can't deal effectively with interpersonal problems. They can't reason. They can't make decisions. They have bad relationships with other people. People seem to not like them. What is that all about? There's conflicts, and they can't adapt to change, and people don't trust them. One other statistic, one of my favorites, is one that came from Seth Godin that says, 15% of your success is your functional skill. That's through whether you're in marketing or operations or technology or whatever. 15% of your success is your functional skill. But 85% of your success 
is your ability to work with people. Okay. So in other words, emotional intelligence is very, very important to your leadership success. And it's very important that we all learn what our emotional intelligence is all about. Okay. So these are the 14 scripts, uh, critical skills for success. We've all seen these, correct? You've all seen these, yes? Now, here's the rub. Without emotional intelligence, we can't do any of these skills. We can't do them well. So in the 21st century, you all think, okay, I get that, Gina, in theory, but how do I do it in practice? Well, we have to talk about what emotional intelligence is all about. Let's talk about the, the quadrants. Now, these are the key characteristics based on the golden model. I gave you also a handout just to give you the model in there as well. Okay, so the key quadrants here are based on two competencies. Self-awareness and self-management are for your personal competencies. And social awareness and relationship management are your social competencies. So let's start off with the personal competencies. The first one is self-awareness. Self-awareness. What do you think self-awareness is all about? Any ideas? Self-awareness? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's all about knowing your conscious and unconscious. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? What do you believe? What do you value? What's important to you? What gets you angry? What gets you irritated? What bothers you? It took me to the age of 40 to really understand who I am, what I believe, why I get angry, and what gets me upset. I didn't know that. I was very reactionary. Still am a little bit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to anybody. But the difference, oh thank you. But the difference is before I would just react, I stop and I ask myself, why am I angry? Why is this bothering me? What is the deeper issue? For every root cause, for every problem that exists, there's a root cause. Do you take the time to ask yourself, what is the root? So there's self-awareness. Self-management is all about understanding your reactions in the moment. How many of you know when you're getting angry? <laughs> How, only a few of you know? <laughs> irritated or agitated? What goes on in your body? He, what do you say? The blood pressure goes up? Okay. What else happens? Tongue tied. You forget to breathe? Fear? You get sick to your stomach? So when you start to have these physical reactions, what do you normally do? Self-motivation. 
and self-motivation is all about, and this is really something that's difficult for a lot of people, is being able to, the ability to motivate yourself without anyone having to ask you, and when it's something that you really don't want to do. You don't have, you, you just don't want to do it, but self-motivation pushes you past that regardless of that. I'm in a doctoral program I'm in my last year, and I'm in dissertation mode, heavy. And I'm going to tell you, it takes a lot of self-motivation on my part. I want to do everything else but work on my dissertation. <laughs> but I have to keep remembering, I have this sign on my desk that says, Dr. Gina Yvette Davis. And every time I look up and I see that sign, Dr. Gina Yvette Davis, I say, okay, let's get busy. Let's get busy. So self-management is, is all about understanding your emotions in the moment, being self-motivated, knowing what you want to do, and doing it despite the problems, despite the fact that you may not want to do it. So those are the personal competencies. So before you can lead anybody, you have to have these two competencies down first. That makes sense? Self-awareness and self-management. Then you move over to the social competencies. These are the competencies when you are understanding and working with others. So the first one is social awareness. Social awareness is all about understanding the emotions of other people. Understanding the emotions of other people. It's about being intuitive. And, and here's something that's interesting. I'm very intuitive. But there are a lot of us that are not very intuitive. If someone's, if you ask somebody, Mark, are you upset? And Mark says, no, I'm not upset. But his facial expressions and his body language says that he is. A person who is not socially aware, they'll say, OK. And then when Michael says, wasn't Mark upset? Well, he said he wasn't upset. You see where I'm going? So it's your ability to recognize other people's feelings, other people's emotions. Okay? Social awareness is key because what lies in emotional uh, social awareness is empathy. We want to be able to practice empathy. And empathy is the idea of putting yourself in other people's shoes being able to understand it. It does not mean that you have to agree with them. It doesn't mean that you have to agree. But it's for you to understand. And it's definitely different than sympathy, which we won't go into. Then we have relationship management. And relationship management is all about understanding yourself and understanding your others and bringing the two together so that you can be able to have effective communication. This is understanding people's personality style communication style. I gave you guys a handout. We won't be able to go into that handout. This is normally a six-hour course. But I gave you guys a handout to understand behavioral styles. Once you begin to understand your behavioral style, then you can begin to understand the behavioral styles of others. What's the golden rule? Do unto others as you have done unto you. Why is that not a good rule? <laughs> well, okay, that's, that's, sometimes that's true. Maybe what you want is than what other people want. Exactly. People don't want to be treated the way you want to be treated. They want to be treated the way they want to be treated. It's called the Platinum Rule by Tony Alessandro. Treat others the way that they want to be treated. Everyone is different. Everyone thinks differently. They communicate differently. They understand differently. Common sense is not always common. That's right. <laughs> okay? So... Exactly. So once you begin to understand that, then you can begin to build relation, build better relationships. Relationship management also has about building influence and being able to build positive relationships with others. But look at that sheet that I gave you on the behavioral styles and understand that. Again, um, if you want to know more about that, we can definitely talk about that at another time. 
So I just wanted to quickly give you a little neuroscience history here. <laughs> On For some of you might be thinking that emotional intelligence, oh, it's so hairy, fairy, it's so fluffy, bunny. No, there's neuroscience behind it. Okay, so we have here the prefrontal cortex and emotional intelligence is a balance between the rational and the emotional brain. So the free, prefrontal cortex is our cognitive part of our brain. This is the also known as the executive function of the brain. This is where we have our decision making. This is where um, our personality lies. This is where um, our social behavior, our decision making, our personality, everything comes from the prefrontal cortex of our brain. The amygdala is the emotional part of our brain. It's the emotional part. It governs all things emotional. So if we become upset, our brain, our amygdala actually becomes hijacked and we move into a flight or fight response. So, you know, when you start to feel those, those weird feelings where you're getting upset or you're getting agitated and irritated, that's the amygdala being hijacked. And so when the amygdala is hijacked, what do you want to do? What, what should you do? You should breathe. You should step back. You should not go on the attack of someone else. If you're really frustrated or irritated or bothered by somebody, that is not the time to talk to them. You want to step back. You know what, I need five minutes. I need 10 minutes. I need 20 minutes. So the amygdala can calm down a little bit, okay? So neuroscience says that this is part of the limbic system, so it's not something that is just made up. It is definitely our, our brain is affected. So we want to practice our emotional intelligence skills. We want to learn what the key characteristics are, and we want to practice. Because those people that have emotion, great emotional intelligence, if you have low emotional intelligence, you can learn to change them. Your IQ doesn't change. It, it's developed fully by the time you reach the age of 15, and it does not change. But your emotional intelligence can change. You can improve it with practice. You have to be what? You have to be willing to change. Okay? Five minutes. Got five minutes left. Okay. So these are the five steps to leading the village in the 21st century. What is it? Develop your emotional intelligence skills. Period. Period. So these are just some things that I put up for you. The first thing is become aware of your inner dialogue. We talk to ourselves. I like to call it the monkey mind. <laughs> the monkey mind is always talking. It's always telling us stuff. My monkey mind tells me some best-selling -seller, stories. So be aware of what your mind is telling you. Okay? Before you act, think about these things first. Second, consider who you're communicating with. Remember I said that everyone thinks differently, communicates differently? They're different than you. We're not all the same. Things that you think is crazy may not be crazy to someone else. So consider, understand the behavioral and communication styles of others. Learn those styles, match those styles, and learn how to flex your style to get what you need. Practice empathy. Practice empathy. We all know what empathy is all about, but here's some suggestions. Get to know and start talking to people that you don't know. How many of you like the people watch? Okay, people watching is great because what happens when you people watch? What comes to mind? You start thinking about where that person might be going, what they're wearing, and sometimes we start creating stories about these people. <laughs> Don't we? I know I do. So this is a great practice to help you with learning empathy. Where did that person come from? What, what are they thinking? What are their beliefs? What are their values? 
Why do they think the way they think? Why do they feel the way they feel? Get to know the people that you work with. Understand where they come from. And so when you're communicating with them, then you start communicating from a place of empathy and understanding. We don't do that enough. The next one is breathe. We've all heard about mindfulness. Start a mindfulness practice, whether that be meditation, whether that be taking yoga, whether that be chanting, whatever that is, take some time to get still and get quiet. We don't do that. We're so busy running. We're so busy just doing, 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 and we don't take time out for ourselves just to be still. There are a couple of apps that I like to use to help me get calm. One is called a Calm app. Okay, it's a really great app. And then the second one is called Brainwaves. It's another great app that you can use to calm that brain down. So when you start to feel agitated or irritated or you can't focus, definitely use that app to, to help you with that. Or do some sort of mindfulness practice, even if it's just for five minutes. Because you'll be surprised how you're able to communicate with other people when you are calm, when you are focused. Okay? Third one is focus on the outcome. Stephen Covey, you guys all have heard of Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey wrote the book Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. He says, begin with the end in mind. So focus on the outcome. What is it that you want? What is it that you're looking for? And then put a strategy together to get that. Okay? People love working with people who they trust who they like, who they have a connection with. And you, each one of you, can build those emotional intelligence skills and lead the 21st century from a humanistic perspective. That's what this is all about. This is one of my favorite part, um, quotes, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts by Aristotle. Okay? Without emotional intelligence, without developing those emotional intelligence skills, all those hard skills that you know, marketing, operations, all those technical skills will not get you to that next level. Emotional intelligence is going to get you there. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I'm on time, yay! Any questions? Yes. So that's a very good question, that if you're not getting that feedback from, like when you say maybe your boss or something, if you're not getting that feedback, then try to get feedback from, from other people. So maybe a coworker, maybe a, one of your clients, or maybe someone from another department that you're working with on a regular basis. Get that feedback, see how you're doing. How many of you guys have all heard of uh, 360 assessments, right? Well. It used to be where you would give them to executives, but now more and more people who are line staffers or who are lower, lower level positions can do a 360 themselves. And by asking maybe three, or three to five different people, hey, can you give me some feedback on my performance? Have them write it down for you and keep it in your file. This is a little tip, keep it in your file so when review time comes, then you have some information, you have some evidence of the things that you're doing well and the things that you need to improve on, and then you can have that dialogue with your boss and be able to say, here's, here's some feedback that I'm receiving. Do you agree with the feedback? Do you disagree? Why or why not? It's called being pro.